Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. Is it important for us to know that there is nothing that our God can, cannot handle? There is, that he has things that we can't even think of that he's going to do for us if we would just wait on him. Is that good for your faith to know? Absolutely. In verse 10, he says, For to us God has revealed through the Spirit, for the Spirit, it says, searches all things, even the depths of God. And it says, And, and for who amongst men knows the thoughts of a man except the Spirit of a man? which is in him. Even so, the thoughts of God no one knows except for the Spirit of God. God's Spirit knows the very thoughts of God. Is it good to have His Spirit in our lives? Absolutely. And now he says, we have received not the Spirit of this world. This is really important that we get this. We didn't receive the Spirit from this world, but we received the Spirit. And by the way, you might notice it has, hopefully in your Bible, the Spirit from God with a capital S, the Holy Spirit of God is what you received, so that we may know the things freely given to us. You know, God gave us His Spirit so that we can know the things that He has for us. Now, what kind of things does the Holy Spirit give us? You know, Jesus said, I, don't, don't be troubled, I'm leaving. I'm going to send you the Holy Ghost. He's going to teach you. He's going to lead you, right? He's going to guide you. He's going to comfort you. He'll bring to your remembrance all that I've said to you. He's going to... He's going to be... He was called up in in the Greek, paraclete. Para means with, and clete means helper. He's the helper that will be with... Anybody like the idea of having God's Spirit as your helper? Going with you. I mean, I'm not talking about helper like from far away. I mean helper... With you, just to make an example, my son Daniel, he he can. I mean, he's got, he's growing and getting, you know, the strength that young men have, and and yet he'll tell me, Dad, I know I could do this, but it would. Could you just come and sit in the shop with me while I do it? Why, son, you don't need me there. You can do this. Yeah, I know I can, but I'd rather have someone with me. Does anyone ever feel like this? Like, you can do the thing by yourself, but it's just better if you have someone go do it with you. You know, even if they just sit there and they don't actually do anything, but they just keep you company. That's someone with you to help you. Did you know that God said, I'm giving you my Holy Spirit to be with you, to be your helper? Now, is that good to teach you as a, as a, as a believer? That God's Spirit's with you. So if no one else is around, you still know God's Spirit is with you. You don't have to feel alone. By the way, this is truly, I believe, one of those spiritual truths that once it sinks in, it, it helps deliver people from that, that gnawing feeling of loneliness. And in our society, do we have people who feel lonely? All, all over. I mean, we made a little devotional on the words of encouragement on our, on our YouTube channel about what's the Bible say about loneliness. And I taught about this, how the Holy Spirit, once you, once you give your life to the Lord, God says, I'll give you my spirit. And you don't ever have to feel lonely because his spirit will be with you. It says his spirit will never leave you. Jesus said, Jesus said I'll never leave you. Right? What do you say? I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Lo, I will be with you even to the ends of the age. You have nothing to feel lonely about when you're a Christian. But if you're not a Christian... Yeah, you should feel lonely because you have a void in your life that is meant to be filled by God. And you need him to fill it so that you don't have to feel that, that emptiness. But it's designed by, and you know, I believe we all have that void. It's like that, that empty hole in us and it, and it shaped however, I don't know, like a puzzle piece, whatever, and People in this life, they go, I feel a little emptiness. And they try to stick things into, they go, well, I got some alcohol here. Let me see if this will fit. And yeah, they can get it in the hole, but it doesn't fill in the whole 
shape. You know, so they try, they turn to something else, drugs, and they try to, and it doesn't fill the hole. And until you put the piece in that fills, that's made to fit that exact contour, that shape, God's spirit is made to fill in you. You're going to keep feeling empty. Even if you shove a bunch of different things in there, you won't get that complete fulfillment I'm talking about. And Paul knew this. He said, guys, we received the spirit from God so we could freely know these things. And we, which he says, these things we also speak. Now, not in words taught by human wisdom, but, but in those taught by the spirit. We combine spiritual thoughts with spiritual words. We teach you things of the Spirit. Now, things of the Spirit are contrary to things of this world. I shared uh, about our experience on the cruise ship, how I was teaching my kids from the Scripture, attitude of what? Gratitude. How many people do you think besides my family were, 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 had adopted this idea of attitude of gratitude on the cruise ship? A few. Yeah, my wife said, there's a few. 2,700 passengers, like three others. No, I'm just saying, it was a full ship, it was, it was to capacity. They said there was 2,700 past sailing, sailing passengers on the ship and, and 920 crew members. And they were, there were people, I, I tell you, the most self-entitled, demanding, crabby people I have, I mean, and ruined. They ruined the vibe in the dining hall. Just, it only takes one bad apple. Right? To, 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 to ruin the whole bushel? I mean, it could ruin it for all the tables around them just because that one person was so demanding. I need this. Get me the manager. This is not right. I want you, you know. And all, they, all they had to do was say, hey, could you get me another one? My, fell, my fork fell on the floor or something. I mean, whatever. It's just like, you got to be kidding me. But I tell you, Paul says he's combining spiritual thoughts with spiritual words. In the scripture, we're told to give thanks. To, to give thanks with a grateful heart. We sang about that in our worship time. Give thanks with a grateful heart. We're, we're, this whole thing, well, we did it on Tuesday night. For those of you who weren't there in, in the book of Colossians chapter 2, Paul was commending the church at Colossae. You guys, I'm so glad to hear. He was in jail, but I heard that you guys way over there are standing in your faith. And you're growing and you're bearing fruit. He was, he was all excited for them in chapter 2. And he says, and I hear you're overflowing with gratitude. Overflowing. Now, I mentioned this because a few weeks ago, it didn't get, the recording wouldn't come out. On the one day I wanted to come out so I could send it to the folks on the ship, I wanted to send the link and say, I talked about you at our church because, you know, you guys have been so, so good to me. I wanted to, to let you know I really do appreciate it. Well, something glitched. I'm like, oh man. I wish I could have. I wish I could have let them know, you know. So I, I did what Holland taught me. You, you guys remember Holland that did the, the announcements here? Our black brother that just that sweet. He's he's our radio voice on our radio program, the intro and the exit thing, and he's got that real smooth voice, you know. And he he goes, um, well, you're gonna bless those guys. You don't do. You don't write to the ship, thank you. You write to the CEO of the company. And you tell them what a great job they did. And then you let it trickle down. It'll get back to them. But then they get a real pat on the back from the top. And I was like, oh, that's really good. I didn't really think of that. You know, but this is practicing giving thanks and, and just being, and I know the world doesn't like to practice saying thank you. Believe me, they, they hate this. It's like, it's like the Fonz. He, you know, do you remember watching Happy Days? One time the Fonz was wrong, and he had to say he was wrong. He was sorry, you know. He's standing there like, I can't even get the words out of my mouth. Remember that episode? He couldn't, he couldn't even say that he was sorry or he was wrong. And it's, it, you know, the world is about as dysfunctional when it comes to saying thank you. In this day, it is so, how do I say, it's not, it's not like we were brought up. We were, we was drilled into us. You say please. You say thank you. You open the doors for the people. You, you know, you manners were like demanded, not, not um, suggested. They were, they were mandatory. Everybody, you will 
show manners. And, and this was, but, but what a, you know, I'm looking at this thing and I was reading the head for teaching while I was on the cruise, but just, just, just to, I wasn't studying. I was just reading, enjoying the scripture. And I was thinking, wow, the wisdom of this world is so contrary to the wisdom of God. God says to give thanks in all circumstances. Just give thanks. And, 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 and to the Colossians, when he, Paul was in jail, he was rejoicing that they were overflowing with gratitude. This is a true pastor's heart, that he could hear that another church was filled with gratitude. Wouldn't that be nice if they heard that about our church? They're like, we went to that church, man, they were just overflowing with gratitude. They were just grateful for the things God had done. And for, well, I mean, everything. They just overflowed with gratitude. But do they say that about us? Or do they go, I went there, they're a bunch of crabby people. You know. No, they don't say that about ours. Thankfully, they don't. I, know. I do know this. I, 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 I'm very, very blessed as a pastor. I got a little note in the box one day. This is a few years back. They wrote, please pray for our fellowship. You know on the back of your bulletin where it says prayer requests? Pray for our fellowship that, they, that we will have love like you guys do. And they felt the love of the Lord here. They were visiting from the mainland. from a big fellowship. And I thought, that's one thing I'm so grateful to hear. We were marked by that attribute, that there's love. Because that's what Jesus said. They will know that you're my disciples. That you have what? Love for one another. So I was just like, yeah, this is they, At least we got that. Now we got to work on overflowing with gratitude, okay? I mean, and I, I only say this because we all can improve on, in different areas, right? But listen, you guys know that, that I, I shared our praise report of how grateful we were, what a great time we had. And it was at, the, it was at the, the, the Tuesday night study, and I said, and the only thing that could have been better was my wife's bucket list dream was to go t for our, it was our 30th anniversary last year, that we would go for our, um, that it would have been an Alaska cruise, not around the islands. We've done the island one. <laughs> we live here. We don't even get off the boat. We just, <laughs> everyone else are running around. We're like, we own the ship, you know. <laughs> we go to the jacuzzi, selfie. And you look in the background, and there's no one on the whole deck of the ship, just us. Look, we have the whole pride of America to ourselves. Hi, everyone. You know, and we just have fun. We're just like, because we live here, so we just, and they go, oh, that's the Hawaii family. They're really nice. They, they say hello to you, you know, the, the helpers. They, they talk to us, and they're like, you talk with us, and you're nice, and, and you're just pleasant. And, and I, I'm like, you know, I know the world says be, be demanding, but I think we get way better service by just having an attitude of gratitude. We do. I mean, we really do. So I shared that at the study, and this older couple that was visiting, they come every couple years, they said, that was, the, that was so neat to hear your testimony of that. And, and our favorite, favorite cruise ever was Alaska Land and Sea, it's called. You have to do a train and, you know, you have to see the land portion, and you got to do the ship. And so we want to pay for you to go. Listen to this. We want to pay for you to go. And he, he goes, um, so he tells us the name of the ship. We look it up. And it's beautiful. National Geographic Explorer. Had, like, I read a review. It was, it was 350 people who work on the ship, 130 passengers. Almost three to one. Like three people waiting on you. To one, I mean, it was like, and it had over the top reviews, like the best ever of all my cruises. I'm like thinking, man, this is, of my, all my hundred cruises this guy wrote, I'm like getting super excited. And then I'm like, I can't find out how much this ship costs. I can't find it anywhere. I finally Google imaged it. Beautiful picture of it. Second picture, it's on an atoll somewhere, sunk. I went, well, we ain't going on that ship. <laughs> Sunk in 2011. When I told the fellow this, he came to a house and I, I showed him on my computer. I said, here, here's what happened to the ship you wanted to send us on. And I'm thinking, oh, bummer, because there went our chance, right? He goes, oh, that's too bad. That was a great ship. How about if you went on that company with what you went with? Would that be okay? And I had already looked. So I clicked the next tab. You mean this one? He goes, 
He goes, yeah. And, and I go, well, it's kind of expensive. And I showed him the prices. The inside room is the cheapest. And he goes, you don't go to Alaska to ride in the belly of a ship. He goes, you, need, you must have a balcony. That's like two columns over. You know, there's inside room, ocean view, partially obstructed, and then balcony, you know. And each one gets more pricey. And he goes, would that, would that be okay with you to go on that cruise line? And I'm thinking, yeah, that's the one we go on here. We know the people. I wrote nice letters about them. He goes, okay, click it, buy it right now. On one con he goes, and on one condition, he says, and he got a check, and he's handed it to me in the air like this to me. And I go, what's that? He goes, that you go for your 31st, not your 40th anniversary, your 50th, for your 31st. This year you go. And he, I'm like, and he goes, is that okay? I, I, I was about to, like, you know, pass out or something. I don't know, do a backflip. I was freaking out. I'm like, of course it's okay. Give me, you know, so I take the check, and I'm like, we're going to Alaska, honey. We're going for our 31st anniversary for your, your, your bucket listing. We get to do this. And, uh, and so I'm just rejoicing. I'm just like, I can't believe it. This is so great. So I wrote to the people at the ship here what a praise that because I shared what a great job you did, guess what? I get to go again. They said, oh, we'll write to the other ship and tell them to spoil you. And, 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 and we, you know, you, you guys wrote a nice letter about us, and we were so blessed. So it was such a nice letter that it came from the top. The top guy wrote to me last, just two days ago and said, I put you on the, I don't know what it means, RTVIP list, whatever RT is. Jan, Jan do you know what RT is? That's her husband, RT. No, <laughs> I don't know. But we're on, we're on that list. And he, and he said, and go to the VIP check-in, and they'll be there waiting for you. We're, no, we're nobody. We're just like, thank you, Lord. You're so kind. But see, I got to tell you, I, I think people underestimate. This, is, this, I believe, happened because of this right here. The wisdom of, the, of God says, be grateful. The wisdom of the world says, complain. Even our waiter, one of our waiters, one of our favorite told us, you know, people come to the ship and they know if they complain that they're going to get some freebie. So they literally come with that attitude of, I'm going to complain. I'm going to find something to complain about. And we went with the attitude of, don't complain about anything. Just be grateful. And if stuff went wrong, just, it's no big deal. And you know what? They treated us so wonderfully, more than I believe you could get for being a complainer. I mean, yeah, they might give you the thing, but like, it's like this, here, take it, you know? Yeah, here, have this free thing, you know, but we just can't wait for you to go. But us, they were like, here, have this. We're so sorry, there was a little problem. No problem. Man, we want you to come again. You know, when we got there and they yelled, Manzo's from the, <laughs> the dining hall's like seats a thousand, okay? I'm not exaggerating. The, the big dining halls, there's like two of them on the, sh on the Pride of America. I like a thousand people sit in that room for eating. And at the far back is the waiter we had from the previous cruise, David Lyle, and he sees us. And he throws his arms up in the air. He starts running towards us. Manzo's! And, and hugs us all and greets us. And the people are looking at us like, you know, who are these people? They must be really important, you know? And the other waiter sees and he runs over and hugs us and and it, Philip from Jamaica is like, oh, welcome back, pasta. Welcome back, pasta. That's how he says it. Yeah, I'm just like, so cool. You know, and, and w they're like, whoa, these must be really important people. And we're like, no, but we're grateful. We're grateful people. Now, see, that's different than the world, right? The world says just be demanding. God says be grateful. And you know what? I think people really like to see you coming when you have that. At, you're overflowing with gratitude. So if you do me a favor this week, let's be the church that is known for being the ones overflowing with gratitude. And it starts by just saying to God, God, thank you. You know, if you can't think of what to thank the Lord for, start with that he gave us his son. That his son died for us, paid for all our sins. If you start there, the rest will start to like overflow out of you. But you got to start with that. That's why Paul didn't want to determine 
anything else other than Christ. I want you to know the Lord. I want you to know that he died for your sins. If you know that, and you know that you have his spirit, his spirit, not the world's spirit, his spirit, and all the things his spirit will give you, you're going to have a good week. You're going you're gonna to have a completely different experience in your faith. See, and is it exclusive, like only some of us get to have God's spirit and the rest don't? No, it's for everyone, right? This is, this is available to every believer. But I think today, is that taught across the board at the different churches? You go in and they're telling you, hey, God's spirit is there to help you. Lean on his spirit. Wait on his spirit. His, those that wait on the Lord renew their strength. You, want, you need more strength? Go to the Lord. If, if all the churches would just continue to teach reliance on the Lord, I think we'd see a, a, a big growth in church. Because there's a whole world hurting. They need that. But they're not all being told the answer. Well, next week we'll continue. We'll pick up here with this thought. So hold on to that for me. Relying on what, what spirit? Spirit of God. Rely on that, and we'll pick up in chapter 2. We'll finish this next week, and uh, there's, some, there's some cool things coming up. If you would, read the only couple verses left in this chapter. Read into the next chapter. We'll be going into chapter 3 next week, and we'll continue our study there. So let, let's pray and give thanks to the Lord. Lord, I thank you so much for your kindness to me, to my family. I thank you, Lord, that uh, you, have, you have blessed us with sweet, your, your love, your sweet love and your peace in our fellowship. Please continue to pour that into our hearts by your Holy Ghost, Lord, that we would all grow. And we would grow in that knowledge, Lord, of the things that you have for us from your Holy Spirit. Let, let us be people that could be the ones that, like Isaiah said, that have ears that could hear. Like Jesus would cry out, let them that have the ear to hear hear what the Spirit says. May we be the ones listening to your Spirit this week as we go through this week. Lord, give us your eyes to see what your Spirit wants us to see. We ask it in Jesus' name. And everyone that agree with me said? Amen. 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 Would you stand with me listening a closing song and send you off in the joy of the Lord? Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, amazinggracekona.com and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo and God bless.